Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today I'm inside JD Brewer's fab shop and he is putting together a lightweight fixture to build a bunch of ladders. Let's dive in. JD builds a bunch of mezzanines and work platforms for local factories and so today he needs to build a bunch of ladders to go with those mezzanines. A quick disclaimer here, welding on ladders should only be done by qualified welders and using properly qualified procedures. Today for the ladder, JD is going to be using dual shield flux core. A mag drill in a shop can be really handy. This is a Hogan drill and JD is drilling some holes here that he's then going to slot out with a grinder for slots to hold the rungs in the ladder. This is a fixture, a lightweight fixture for putting together several ladders. He's got a good half a dozen of them or so to build and some of them he may even have to build on site. So just making a nice light duty fixture here instead of something substantial on a big welding table. JD likes a six inch Metabo for, for cutting stuff like this. And also this little dealio here is called a plate vise. It'll, it'll hold unistrut, it'll hold uh, four inch square tubing or pipe, and lots of other shapes. But it gets it off the ground so that you can use a porta band or a grinder or whatever, and you can put a foot on it to kind of steady it up. And it's just a handy, pretty inexpensive tool to have. This is four inch square tubing, and he uses this a lot for pipe supports and things like that. Still using the dual shield flux core just because it requires very little prep over mill scale and things like that and because it penetrates so much better than short circuit MIG for applications like this. This is a floor flange on a piece of four inch tubing that's got holes in it and it will be bolted to the floor to support uh, a pipe. Now this is only 035 diameter dual shield flux core so uh, sometimes he uses a power MIG 210 in this case he's using a power MIG 256. 210 handles it really well though, doesn't really require a lot of power. But you can see there it's just it's slightly messier than short circuit MIG, but a little wire wheeling and you're good to go. <laughs> Here's another little handy item. It's called a, uh, I think it's called Sawhorse Vice. This one's a craftsman. You can find them made by Rockwell also. He likes to carry this on the job. You can hold different shapes and different sizes in different positions and it's pretty lightweight. You can, you can uh, position a part where you throw your grinding sparks down to the floor away from you. Uh, if, if you're working by yourself it can, it can serve as a sort of a, a third hand to hold something at an odd angle while you get a tack on it. Just a handy thing when you're working in the field by yourself you got to have stuff like this. Okay, on to the building of the fixture for putting the rungs on the ladder. This is pretty lightweight here. It's eighth of an inch wall, uh, two inch leg, angle iron. And one more thing before we get into it here, the way you cut the angles on it, this is an evolution saw and it's got this little attachment here that slips on and off the jaws of the vise there and lets you hold angle up to, to make a cut like this. So that works out really well. These are little V-pads here from Stronghand Tools. And we're tacking, tacking this thing up using silicon bronze. It's kind of an experiment here. I know it's not, this fixture is not going to have much stress on it. And so we don't want it to warp much. And that's one good thing about silicon bronze and, and, and using it for fixtures is, lightweight fixtures, is that it just doesn't pull much. It doesn't distort much. So if you're doing one-off stuff, prototype stuff, like you're going to see how something works, it's a good, it's a good thing to try. Also, it grind, the welds grind off really easily. So if you're doing experimentations on building a fixture you can grind out a weld really easily and put in another one. So getting this thing all squared up and it's time to weld it out now. I use the term weld loosely here. Technically it's called TIG brazing because silicon bronze melts at about 1900 Fahrenheit while steel more like about 2700 Fahrenheit so it just flows in like brazing. Now JD is, is using just a minimal heat here, just, just walking over the wire, leaving the wire in the puddle. In a few seconds here he's going to let us know how he likes the new Lincoln Viking helmet with the 4C. This hood is ridiculous. I can see the color. It went to green, back to clear. This hood blows my balder out of the water. And that's a good hood. This 4C? In your own words. Now JD's only using about 85 to 90 amps here. 
it just doesn't take near that near the heat to melt silicon bronze that it does to actually weld it with steel filler metal now i believe jd told me this was his first time messing with silicon bronze at all so he's uh he's doing pretty good now let's talk a little bit about how strong or how strong it isn't he welded up a sample piece like this before we got started it's pretty strong but it's not as strong as jd <laughs> sometimes <laughs> Sometimes it can surprise you how strong it is, like if you're welding on something thin wall and, and round and you put a big fillet on it. Other times, if you don't weld all the way around, it, you, it can surprise you how strong it isn't. So if you, if you go just a little bit hotter and you feed a little bit of rod in and you make sure you put a lot more fillet weld size or braze fillet size, whatever you want to call it, uh, on thin wall stuff, it can be pretty darn strong. All right, well, the fixture's done. And now we're using these little strong hand clamps with the chains on them to hold it on there. I don't know if that's the best way or not, but they sent them for me to try out, and I'm happy to, to try them out here. This is what it looks like. So big thanks to strong hand for sending those out for us to try out. Now the way this fixture works, and I guess you could have made it where it would hold four rungs at a time or, or more, but three seemed to make the fixture more portable so that when carrying it on a job site, it's a little smaller. But you put three rungs in it, and then when you get those three tacked up, then you move it over and hook it on the last rung, and then you can put two more rungs in it that way, and it keeps the rungs spaced evenly, keeps them square, and also holds the uh, the riser pieces in line with each other. And again, it's, it's designed to be used on sawhorses like this, and it seems to be working out really well. And the guy in the safety green shirt there is JD's helper, Zach. What up, Zach? All right, the fixture seems to be going along pretty well. Any anytime you're doing the first one of a bunch here, you know you're not quite as efficient as when you get going and get the workflow going. But this seems to be going along pretty darn fast. So once there's several tacks on everything, it's just time to weld it out. And you want to alternate where you weld side to side, all around, so to prevent distortion. All right, one down, five more to go, but they'll go quick. Well, the 2015 DVD set is finally done and ready for sale at weldmonger.com. Let me give you a real quick look at it here. Backside's got a nice index on it so you can tell what's on each disc. I'll do a little close-up freeze frame here in case you want to read them over. You can pause the YouTube video and see exactly what's on each disc. Four disc set in a nice case, ready to go. You can watch them on YouTube for free, make no mistake about that, but I put them on a DVD set. It takes four discs to get them all on because it's the year's, the year's worth of videos, and a lot of people like to have them on DVDs, and I'm glad they do because it really helps pay for materials and gases and things like that. So if you think something like that will help you out in taking your skills to the next level, you can learn more at weldmonger.com. If not, I will see you here next week anyway. Thanks for watching.